Question 1. Explain CIA triad. While answering this question you should first explain that CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. CIA is a model that is designed to guide policies for information security. It is one of the most popular models used by organizations. Confidentiality. The information should be accessible and readable only to authorized personnel. It should not be accessible by an authorized personnel. The information should be strongly encrypted just in case someone uses hacking to access the data so that even if the data is accessed, it is not readable or understandable. Integrity. Making sure the data has not been modified by an unauthorized entity. Integrity ensures that data is not corrupted or modified by an authorized personnel. If an authorized individual system is trying to modify the data and the modification wasn't successful, then the data should be reversed back and should not be corrupted. Availability. The data should be available to the user whenever the user requires it. Maintaining of hardware, upgrading regularly, data backups and recovery, network bottlenecks should be taken care of. Question 2. Explain SSL encryption and how does it work. Start with saying that SSL or Secure Sockets Layer is the industry standard security technology for creating encrypted connections between web server and a browser. This is used to maintain data privacy and to protect the information in online transactions. The steps for establishing an SSL connection is as follows. Step 1. A browser tries to connect to the web server secured with SSL. Step 2. The browser sends a copy of its SSL certificate to the browser. Step 3. Then the browser checks if the SSL certificate is trustworthy or not. If it is trustworthy, then the browser sends a message to the web server requesting to establish an encrypted connection. Step 4. Now the web server sends an acknowledgement to start an SSL encrypted connection. Step 5. Finally, SSL encrypted communication takes place between the browser and the web server. Question 3. What steps will you take to secure a server? Start by explaining that secure servers use the SSL or TLS protocols for data encryption and decryption to protect data from unauthorized interception. Here are four simple ways to secure a server. Step 1. Make sure you have a secure password for your root and administrator users. Step 2. The next thing you need to do is make new users on your system. These will be the users you use to manage the system. Step 3. Remove remote access from the default root administrator accounts. Step 4. The next step is to configure your firewall rules for remote access. Question 4. What is a brute force attack? How can you prevent it? Start by saying that brute force is a way of finding out the right credentials by repetitively trying all the permutations and combinations of possible credentials. In most cases, brute force attacks are automated where the tool software automatically tries to log in with a list of credentials. There are various ways to prevent brute force attacks. Some of them are Password length, you can set a minimum length for password. The lengthier the password, the harder it is to find. Password complexity, including different formats of characters in the password makes brute force attacks harder. Using alphanumeric passwords along with special characters, and upper and lower case characters increase the password complexity making it difficult to be cracked. Limiting login attempts, set a limit on login failures. For example, you can set the limit on login failures as 3. So, when there are 3 consecutive login failures, restrict the user from logging in for some time, or send an email or OTP to use to log in the next time. Because brute force is an automated process, limiting login attempts will break the brute force process. Question 5. What are the different layers of the OSI model? 
Start by saying that an OSI model is a reference model for how applications communicate over a network. The purpose of an OSI reference is to guide vendors and developers so the digital communication products and software programs can interoperate. Following are the OSI layers. Physical layer, it's responsible for transmission of digital data from sender to receiver through the communication media. Data link layer, it handles the movement of data to and from the physical link. It is also responsible for encoding and decoding of data bits. Network layer, responsible for packet forwarding and providing routing paths for network communication. Transport layer, it's responsible for end-to-end -end communication over the network. It splits the data from the above layer and passes it to the network layer and then ensures that all the data has successfully reached at the receiver's end. Session layer, it controls connection between the sender and the receiver. It is responsible for starting, ending, and managing the session and establishing, maintaining, and synchronizing interaction between the sender and the receiver. Presentation layer, it deals with presenting the data in a proper format and data structure instead of sending raw datagrams or packets. Application layer, it provides an interface between the application and the network. It focuses on process-to-process -process communication and provides a communication interface. There is detailed for part video series made where attacks at each layer is explained with examples. Be sure to check out that video. Let's continue further. Question 6. What is a VPN? Almost all cybersecurity interview questions will have this question included. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It is used to create a safe and encrypted connection. When you use a VPN, the data from the client is sent to a point in the VPN where it is encrypted and then sent through the internet to another point. At this point, the data is decrypted and sent to the server. When the server sends a response, the response is sent to a point in the VPN where it is encrypted and this encrypted data is sent to another point in the VPN where it is decrypted. And finally, the decrypted data is sent to the client. The whole point of using a VPN is to ensure encrypted data transfer. Question 7. What is black hat, white hat, and gray hat hackers? Start by saying black hat hackers is someone who has vast knowledge about breaking into computer networks. They can write malware which can be used to gain access to these systems. This type of hackers misuses their skills to steal information or use the hacked system for malicious purpose. White hat hackers use their knowledge for good deeds and so they are also called ethical hackers. These are mostly hired by companies as a security specialist that attempts to find and fix vulnerabilities and security holes in the systems. They use their skills to help make the security better. Grey hat hackers are an amalgamation of a white hat and black hat hacker. They look for system vulnerabilities without the owner's permission. If they find any vulnerabilities, they report it to the owner. Unlike black hat hackers, they do not exploit the vulnerabilities found. Bonus! Hello everybody. Well, if you've made it this far into the video, this means that uh, you are really serious about your cybersecurity career and you are looking to get a job into cybersecurity. Uh, I just want to address a little ish issue out here. So, looks like there isn't a lot of jobs or even if you're giving interviews, you're not getting jobs out there. So I take it from a first-hand experience. Now, what's happening out there is there's a lot of layoff and company you know, organizations are doing a lot of, you know, fine-tuning in the, the way they operate. And this is a part of it. They would be confused at the moment. They would be... Uh, 
laying off employees there wouldn't be a lot of work coming in or there would be a lot of lot of work coming in for the people who are already in there but i would want to give you all an assurance that hang in there keep trying for jobs in cyber security if you're looking to get into one and uh, keep preparing keep going through my videos i would keep posting content that would help you and keep you updated at all times now all the questions all the seven questions that i've mentioned today are really important ones because uh, it is something that is for sure is getting asked in the cybersecurity interview questions. And if you felt that like you did not understand any one of them, I'll link videos in detail where I've explained and talked about all of those. Feel free to go to those links and then grab as much knowledge as possible. All right. That's all I wanted to tell you guys on this section. I uh, hope you have a great day ahead. Bye now.